Hey, good afternoon. Welcome to uh, another segment with us. We are sharing uh, from last week's lesson. Literally, and I said this before, it is a continuation from the week before. So the week before, we looked at John 15 and verses uh, 1 through 7, 1 through 8. And then we pick it up this week with John 15 and 9 through 17. So really as a continuation of Jesus's I am statement, his seventh I am statement. If you look through the Gospel of John, we said that there are seven I am statements that connect Jesus with Genesis and Moses at the burning bush, identifying that Jesus is God as well as God the Father. And so in this week, we continued with sort of like the same theme of fruit that will last. The week before, we talked about uh, fresh fruit and how that played out in this particular lesson. Today, as Jesus continues, he says this in verse 9, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. Verse 10 says, If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept the Father's commands and remain in his love. So right away, we get this understanding that the, the major theme here is love. And so we talked about, you know, the love that we ought to have for one another as brothers and sisters in Christ and the love that God has for us and the love that we ought to have for Jesus. And we made this point, and I believe it's a great point, that throughout this lesson of love, we, we find these signs in the state of Virginia that talks about love. All over the state, there are more than 300 signs. And we made this point we don't need the world, we should not as Christians, as the church, as the body of Christ, need the world to tell us what love is. And so this particular passage points out to us, my sisters and brothers in Christ, what love is. So if we pick it up again in verse 11, we find Jesus saying, I have told you this so that your, my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. So this whole idea of loving Jesus, of loving God, of staying in his command, points us to the idea that we enjoy this fruitful relationship with Jesus because we, we, we love him, because we love God, because we love one another. We continue in verse 12, it says, my command is this, that you love each other as I have loved you. And so he continues with this love theme, part of the the fruit of our lives ought to be able to demonstrate that we love one another and that we love God. He says this in verse 14, and we pick up this idea. He says, you are my friends if you do what I command. Now, the way that he uses the word command is not to make us do something, but it's we, we have a desire to do it because we're in a relationship with Jesus. The way that he uses the word friend means that we, we look care out for one another's relationships. We don't talk about one another. We don't beat one another out. We, we always look out for one another's best interests. And I said this, and I'll make this point again. For most of us, the kind of friendship and the kind of love that Jesus is referring to, most of us, unfortunately, have never in our lives experienced it. We should be trying. We should be looking to experience that type of love and that type of friendship. And then he finishes this piece in verse 17, and he says, this is my command. He uses the word command again, and he says, love each other. And so he drives the point home with this agape love, the, the word that he's using, that we ought to be able to love one another and somebody or to be able to see it, because the way that he uses this is it's love in action and not love just verbalizing it. And so uh, when we love God, when we love one another, we are, are producing fruit that will last. Amen? Amen. See you the next time.